Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. I'm John Harris. Coming up later in the show, we'll hear a musical performance from Ben Suki. But first, Matt O'Lean interviews Fargo author and motivational speaker, Jody Bach. Welcome to Prairie Pulse, I'm Matt O'Lean. My guest today is author and consultant, motivational speaker, Jody Bach. She does a lot of things here in the fargo Moorhead area. Jody, welcome to Prairie Pulse. Thanks, thanks. First off, Jody, just tell people about yourself, your background, where you're from originally, and how you got involved in consulting and writing books. Okay, well, I'm originally from Lisbon, back in your neck of the mm -hmm. woods, Matt. Um, and I went to Concordia, played basketball at Concordia. And I got into consulting kind of by accident. I didn't mean to, um, kind of how my whole career was when you think about it. I wanted to be a sports information director. So my, my whole um, focus when I played basketball in high school and college was to become a sports information director. And I got the chance to do that after I graduated. Uh, I was in Rolla, my first job out of college was <laughs> Rolla, North Dakota. Hoo -hoo. My, my goal was to be the sports information director at, at UCLA and I ended up in Rolla first. Okay. I was the news and sports editor there and then I got a chance to move back to Fargo and be the sports information director at NDSU. So I like to say I was... Some good years there oh, with the one. women's teams. They yeah. were awesome yeah. and the, the unfortunate thing for me was I didn't wait long enough to enjoy it as much mm -hmm. as I could have. I was only there for about a year and after that uh, Jeff Schwartz who's there now, I keep saying I was Jeff before Jeff was Jeff <laughs> and he's been there since. So I had an opportunity to work there and have a great opportunity to learn a lot and meet a lot of great people and now I'm still the, the scorekeeper for the basketball so it's been however many years that's been and I'm still doing it. Yeah, so Jeff was a huge help with us on our When They Were Kings documentary. Yes, so, and Jeff yeah. loves all those yep. stats and um, he's he's a really good at what he does so it's been fun to work with so him. How'd you get into consulting then? So Tell consulting, me about your business yep. and what you do. Well, what right now what I do is help other people achieve their goals. That's the easiest way to say it. So I help organizations, individuals do whatever they need to do to achieve the goals they set for themselves. I got to that point after a series of other jobs where I was kind of restless and discontent. Um, I ended up being kind of a, uh, if you ask my coworkers, they'll say I wasn't all that fun to work with sometimes because I just didn't know what I wanted to do mm -hmm. with myself. When I figured it out, uh, it was because I had had a series of um, frustrations in my work. And because I had frustrations in my own work, it allowed me the opportunity to create my own business where I could help people alleviate some of those frustrations. And so I understood after a series of, like I said, some mm, tough uh, career op opportunities and options that the only problem that I ever had was me. Mm -hmm. And so when it occurred to me that all the people I was blaming at work and all the things that I was saying were wrong, the only thing they all had in common was me, hmm. Then I had the opportunity to kind of look at myself and say, what can I do differently to create an opportunity to have other people have better careers? So that's so what, what I did. So what do you do? Do you speak to businesses, individuals, both? What's both. your message? Tell us, just give yep. us all the nuts and bolts. I do both. Uh, I used to do more individual coaching than I do now, but I have a, a certification in life purpose and career coaching. And so I help individuals achieve their goals, as I said. I don't do as much of that anymore. I'm finding that I have a passion for groups. So I work with groups of people, sometimes in organizations, sometimes individuals who come together. And we start by studying the book Think and Grow Rich, okay. written in 1937, right. nothing new about the book. And what I find is when you read through the principles in that book together with a group of people, it's a much different experience than reading it yourself. And I'll never forget one gal was in one of my groups two or three years ago, reading this book written in 1937, where she said at the end of the eight weeks together, she said, this is so cutting edge. Because for her, it was an opportunity to say, I can take these principles and apply them to my life today and make some different choices, which produce different results, which get me things that were always there. I just didn't know how to put them together. So I find that to be really rewarding for maybe people who are like I was in an organization and feeling a little discontented. Where do I fit? What's my role? What's my passion? And if they can come together with other people feeling that way over a lunch and we study this book, that's where we find a whole lot of fun and some really great results. Yeah, what's the book about? Who wrote it? What are the kind of the principles of it? Napoleon Hill wrote the book and it's a great story. It's a great history lesson in Napoleon Hill. And uh, he wrote it in, in the 20s and 30s. 
It was published in 37, and some of the principles he uncovered by studying 500 of the most successful people in the late 1800s, early 1900s, were things like desire, um, persistence. You have to have a burning desire in your own self to know what you want to do before you can actually do it. How do you talk to yourself? Auto-suggestion is one of the chapters. Imagination is one of the chapters. So there are just different principles that he uncovered. He says he didn't create. He uncovered by studying successful people. And even today, we're still studying these principles because they're, they're just long-lasting. Let's talk about your books you've written or co-written, I think, four, you told yeah, me? Yeah, 100% four. Factor. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about this one. That one was the result of a blog that I started writing in 2004. Um, I was a writing major in college, and so writing has always been really interesting to me. And I started writing a blog before anybody knew what blogs were in 2004. My blog is called You Already Know This Stuff. And so if you look for the You Already Know This Stuff, you can find that. I'll just do a Google search for it. And I started getting so much interaction from people and so many comments from people about what I was writing that somebody said, you need to write a book. And so I had put a lot of my ideas out there and gotten feedback. And the chapters in the book are sort of a com combination of a lot of those blog posts. You already know this stuff. Nothing, nothing is new. When you hit on a principle, it's something that you go, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. So I tried to put together some principles in my book that would allow people to live their capacity, live today full, not wait till someday, maybe live my potential. So that's what the book is about. And then we have um, Inviting Dialogue, another one that you wrote or co-wrote. Co Tell us about that one. Yeah. That one was, uh, I've, I've learned from people when I've asked them, what do you really want in your life? A lot of people say, I want to be an author. I want to write a book. Nobody really knows how to do that if you're not connected to uh, a publisher or you don't have an agent. So because I had so many people who had stories to tell from the Think and Grow Rich groups that we'd been together for the last six years or so, I decided to put together a compilation of their stories. And they have amazing stories of things they've accomplished because they've put their mind to their goals. And so these are local people in our Fargo-Moorhead community who have achieved great things. Some of them have since moved to other parts of the country because that was their goal. And their stories are, they're just great stories. And they're real, real stories of the people that we know who have done amazing things because they put their mind to it. And what's the mastermind principle? That's another thing you mm -hmm. talk about, right? <clears throat> yep. Mastermind is a term that was coined by Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich. And what he says is when two or more people come together in a spirit of harmony with a chief definite purpose, there's a third mind formed, the best of both of them. He calls that the master okay. mind. So it's kind of like in religion, you hear that in the Bible, when two or more are gathered, there I am. And so when we have a lot of like-minded people or people who are dedicated to different kinds of conversations, that master mind principle is a different feeling than if you're just talking about a book. And so when we get together, we mastermind things. We think about what's the best way we could do this. Let's brainstorm some ideas. Let's get together and see what we can come up with. Because the combination of the two of us is much different than if I were just right. thinking of things myself. And when we have 10 people, it's 10 times as wonderful. In another book, uh, Don't Miss Your Boat, mm -hmm. Living Your Life. What's that one about? Don't Miss Your Boat, Living Your Life with Purpose in the Real World okay. is the title. I was asked to write a chapter in this book, kind of like Inviting Dialogue, where it's a compilation of different stories. Uh, a friend of mine said, you should really write a, a chapter in this book. So that's where I really started. I just I wrote a chapter, which I was told to give something like 200 words, which is nothing. And I think I gave 2,500 or something. And the person that I turned my chapter into said, you've got a book in you. And so that was another place, just more reinforcement for me to write my own book. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of hats because now you're CEO of Keller Williams too. How did that come about? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I didn't realize I was looking for a job. When people leave corporate America, right. in my experience, it's because they've decided they want to. Yeah, right. they're burnt out. They want to do their own thing. They want the flexibility. So I wasn't really looking for a job. I was hoping to get another client. 
uh, for my consulting business. And it turned out that they were recruiting me, and I didn't realize it, just by asking me to have coffee and learn more about who Keller Williams was. And they made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. You've heard that before. Yeah. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's the most amazing company. I have the chance to work with real estate agents who are dedicated to their own careers using mindset, which is what I've been teaching for the past eight years uh, in box, my company yeah. box office. And you still do the consulting? I still do the consulting. I have some clients. I, I, somehow ended up in manufacturing, which I knew nothing about. I do a lot of work in manufacturing organizations with leadership, communication, accountability, the soft skills that really do pay off in hard results, I'm learning. And so I, I do a lot, in, especially in Minnesota, just happened to land there. Right. Here's, here's a question, because there's a lot of people out there looking for answers in mm -hmm. life. Uh, a lot of self-help people, mm -hmm. a lot of consultants, yeah. motivational speakers, sometimes gurus, and some of them aren't on the up and up. Mm -hmm. well, I'm reminded of the sweat lodge sure, incident yep. down in, is it Arizona, Arizona. where the people mm -hmm. died? And I think he's going to jail, I yep. think. I think he's there. As he probably should be. Mm -hmm. How do people know which ones are legit, mm -hmm. like what you offer, and what do you think of these other organizations mm -hmm. that maybe aren't quite on the up and up, mm -hmm. and ask a lot of people to do things they shouldn't be doing. Right. Well, the best advice I can give is trust your intuition, trust mm -hmm. your gut, trust your knowing. And I think over time we've been conditioned in certain ways to not trust ourselves. We've, if you're the authority, I should listen to you, instead of saying what really resonates with me. And so I would tell anybody who wants to work with a guru or wants to find somebody uh, who's teaching them something, what does your gut tell you? What does your soul tell you? Who are you? How does it feel when you're with somebody? You can sense that energy. And I think if we're really true to ourselves, that's what we should trust. And when you find somebody or some group of people maybe that you resonate with, I think if you go back and ask James Ray's followers, did, they, did their gut give them a different indication? They might look back now and say, I wish I would have trusted my gut. Yeah. And so I, I would just say, trust your intuition, trust your gut, trust your soul. So how do people change their life? Because it, it's easy to say, but mm -hmm. harder to do. Mm -hmm. what, what is your message? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people can't change their life, which because life is hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. Money, uh, marriage, work, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting older, kids getting older, your parents getting older. We're asked to be super people, a friend mm -hmm. of mine told me once. You and I are about the same age. It's mm -hmm. that you have to be a super person at work, yeah. at home, everything. How do people deal with that? Because it's not easy sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. and I. I We'd be lying if we were just going to throw out a bunch right. of happy talk and oh, say and everything's going to be everything, wonderful, right? right? <laughs> However, a lot of the way you appear in the world is the way you think. And so if you're faced with a bunch of adverse circumstances, you can s just look at, look, face it. That's probably the best advice, face it. Face your finances, face your marriage, face your relationships, and say, is this really, really what I want? And then, instead of just sitting in what you say you want, because if you say, I want it to be different, your life will always be in want, wanting it to be different. So I have to work on me and become the person to whom those things can happen. And so it's a lot of self-reflection. Every time I have a problem in my life, I'm there for it. And I can blame other people all over the place. I can point the finger at them, or I can stop and say, okay, what does, do all my problems have in common? And if I can get to the point where I say, it's me, what now can I do? What steps can I take? What am I willing to learn? What am I willing to actually take action on? It's no different than deciding you want to get into shape, right? You want to work out and eat right. I know I should work out and eat right. It's not like I don't know it. It's what I'm willing to do to get that. And sometimes you just need the support of people in your life who will be able to say, I'm going to support you in making that change. Because in my experience, very few people seek change. They avoid right. change. Right. I'd much rather have things stay the same. Let's just keep it in our little box. Life's not that way. Life is very dynamic and very fluid. And if we can accept the fact that things will be, as you said, it will be difficult. There are things we need to learn. There's always a lesson and a message in that for me if I can be reflective. That's my, my experience. And I think if you talk to any of the people who have been studying Think and Grow Rich or some of the other books we've been studying, any of the people at Keller Williams who we get a chance to be around all the time, it's so much easier to be positive than to be negative about some of the things that happen in our lives. 
easy to be a victim, easy to say, poor me. The next step above that then is to, to get angry about it. I don't like where I am. What am I willing to do? The next step above that is responsibility. When you take responsibility for your situations in your life, now you can get to the point of compassion. Now that I've taken responsibility, I can see that other people might have things in their lives too that I might have judged. Now I can have compassion for. Then I can choose peace where I'm not attached to the outcome. I can say, it's okay. You may not see the world the way I do. That's okay. I don't, I'm, I'm in peace about that. Then I can choose joy, and then I can choose gratitude, and it's all choice. And what, that's what I find for me, and then the energy I bring to a situation can either be attractive or can push people away. Be responsible for the energy you bring into a room. That Absolutely. Kind of thing. Yeah. What, uh, can you talk about some success stories you've had in talking to groups or people without naming names or mm-hmm. anything like that that really they came back to you and said this really helped yeah I I think this is a good this book is a good example of people who have said because of what I've thought about or what I learned where you were um, I I made a change or I did something Um, I could go through the whole book and tell you situations about that where somebody said I really wanted to move to a different location I wanted to move to another part of the country I was in a relationship that wasn't working out I came to a Think and Grow Rich group. I started thinking about things different. That's why the first word in the title is think. So often we react, we don't think. And when she started thinking and saying, I can actually do something about this, she went to a class. She took a class in something she was interested in, met somebody, moved away, and found the relationship she was looking for just because she started thinking differently. And so that's just one of many examples. Uh, I've been working in manufacturing organizations where it's black and white manufacturing. We teach them a different way of thinking, maybe being accountable. And they, through the middle of the class, I do a day-long class in some cases, and in the middle of the class, I remember one guy saying, this works at home. I could use this at home. Well, yeah, you can always use these kinds of skills if they're transferable, not just at work because then you don't have to remember who am I at work and who am I at home. And they said, I, I had one guy one time who said, I'm a better dad because of what I've learned here. So those are the, the success stories that make a difference in the world. That's what they're, it's just really fun. And what does it mean to live at full capacity? You talk about mm-hmm. that in your books as well. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we wait for someday and we'll say, you know, when I get the car paid off or when the kids get out of high school or when, 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 then I'll do what I want to do. And that's potential. That maybe someday could happen. It's not happening right now today because I'm waiting. Capacity says, what can I do right now today in the moment? And the way I think about that is if you filled a, a container, like a, what's this cup full, it's, I don't know how many ounces that is. If it's at full, mm-hmm. it's at full capacity. Right. If I take a 10 gallon jug, it's at full capacity. If I take a thimble, it's still at full capacity. I have to think in my mind, is this a thimble job or is this a 10 gallon jug job? And if I can in my mind say, I'm gonna make this thimble the, the, the way I'm thinking of this job or this project, I'm gonna do, live it at full capacity. That's the most I can give right now in this moment. That's capacity compared to potential, which is someday. So how, you asked me how. How is, how is the wrong question? Okay. Why is a better question. We get so stuck in the how that sometimes we don't dream big enough. I don't know how that'll ever happen, so I stop. And how keeps us stuck. When I said, why would you want to? Why would that be important to you? Those questions lead us to dreaming and imagining and and bigger goal setting than asking the question how. Mm -hmm. So I don't always know the answer to how, but I can ask the question why. So how do you deal with things in your life when you get down or things aren't going right? I mean, who do you turn to and mm-hmm. what are your, do you practice what you preach then? I, I sure hope so. <laughs> You'd have to ask the people I work right. around now. I, I think they'd tell you I do. Of course, things you know, don't always go as you right. planned them to. I have a mastermind group that I've met with for the past six years every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. And they become almost like family. And so I always know I have somebody I can go to or rely on to just maybe vent to 
I'm very conscious when I'm venting, so I'll say, I, I, I just need to vent right now. I'm just saying this, but I'm very conscious when I put those kinds of words out there. And I've, I've trained myself over time, conditioned myself to remember that the words I use in my thinking, my speaking, my writing are creating my reality. So I want to be really careful with the words I use. About 30 seconds left. If people want to get a hold of you for mm -hmm. consulting or things like that, groups, individuals, where can they go? How do they contact you? Uh, probably the best way is um, email Jody Bock, J O D E E B O C K, at kw.com. Or my, I can, can I give my cell phone sure. number? 701 730 1827 is my phone number. Okay. Feel free to call anytime. Great. Thanks for being here, you Jody. Bet. Good Thanks, seeing Matt. You Good seeing you. Jody Bach has been our guest, author, consultant, uh, motivational speaker, our guest on Prairie Pulse, and stay tuned for more. Ben Suki was raised in a musical family in Mandan. In his solo Stompgrass show, he's a virtual one-man band as he plays three or four instruments, some that he's built himself. Sit back and enjoy the unique style, a mix of blues, folk, and rock.
You're sitting at the station, north to southern line. You're on vacation, the one-way ticket kind. You started moving out slowly, and now there you go. Some kind of zen they found down in old Mexico. Some kind of zen they found down in old Mexico. Some kind of zen they found down in old Mexico. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week, and as always, Thanks for watching. Funded in part by the North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.